A couple of weeks ago, Frontier invited myself and other creators to a bit of an exclusive hands-on event, playing the Great War Western Front, which is their upcoming World War I game coming in 2023. The event entailed a historical battle, which is one of the game modes that you can fight in, and man was it a different experience than anything I've played before, and yet seemed familiar at the same time. Now there is a lot going on with this title, from its hex-based grid strategic command style campaign map to its ultimate general or total war style RTS tactical battles. In a game that's less about total annihilation and is more about defensive lines and reducing the national will of the other side, let's take a look at this very intriguing strategy game, starting with its in-depth campaign map. Now this information wasn't detailed very much in the event, really not much at all, but rather through the extended gameplay first look that Frontier posted to their channel. There are several layers of content that are buried beneath this campaign map to the point where it almost might be a bit grand strategist rather than simple turn-based RTS. So beginning at the top layer, the map itself is obviously the Western Front in World War I. And the way they have that hex grid system in place, it is very fitting for the trench warfare style that did define the entire war. You get to play as the Axis or the Allies, go figure, with the goal, as I mentioned, of reducing the national will of the other side throughout the war. Taking territories, completing certain objectives or event triggers will influence the scale of national will as the campaign progresses one way or the other. Now, as for unit placement, it does seem a bit risk-esque in that you will stack sets of units along the lines every single turn, depending on how much money and supplies that you have. And those two do appear kind of to be the two resources that we have seen so far. Now, the cool part is that you can move units around, which allows you to concentrate on any certain hex while sacrificing other less intense areas. Now, no doubt, the more troops that you have in any hex, should you be attacked or should you attack, you'll get to utilize all of those units within that stack. We'll explain a little bit more on that battle aspect in a bit, but it does seem like you will be able to use that, which could have its positives or negatives. If you were to have too many units and you had a rather massive amount of losses, even if you won, that's gonna reflect poorly on the national will, whereas if you have less units and somehow you were able to be a defensive monster and just wreck the other side, it would allow for more national will on your end. Something to think about. It does go a little bit deeper than just playing that game of risk and stacking up units for an attack or a defense. You have mission objectives and you have events that seem to play a hefty role across both the campaign and the tactical maps. Taking certain objectives like this certain hex or gathering a certain resource might lend you a lot of supplies while also boosting your national will. Maybe choosing one event over another could give you money or supplies like in the video or perhaps a modifier to your troops over X number of turns. A teeny snippet which you're looking at right now of the extended gameplay shows a host of modifiers before starting a battle, undoubtedly as a result of events or weather, which apparently does have a large gameplay aspect to it, and other current effects from those gameplay decisions. But if that weren't enough, there does appear to be some sort of building chain system for the campaign map. You see that in the objectives, some of the event kind of things, we're able to build X building of the second tier, for instance. Although what those look like exactly, or their benefits, the ins and outs of them, we haven't really had explained to us. And on top of that, then you have technology. You have six branches, intelligence, engineering, logistics, infantry, trenches, and flight. Now I would imagine per the usual standard of strategy games, not everything can be researched, thus Specializing could definitely be the name of the trench warfare game. So do you focus on how to get supplies faster to your troops through logistics? Or do you try pushing perhaps to an early tank strategy? It looks to be rather extensive. And so just seeing the mechanic side of it would be a really great help. 
Now, what I've explained to you is literally from the event or what I've noticed from the extended gameplay. There's still so much information that hasn't been given to us or revealed in the videos, but from the campaign side alone, things look to be pretty daggum intense and require just as much focus and understanding as the part that we creators got our hands on, tactical warfare. Now, tactical battles are the meat to the bones of the campaign, and although we only played a tiny sliver of battles in a preformed historical battle in which everything was already kind of predetermined for us, it still gave me a fantastic look into how exactly battles will play, well, at least for the most part. I'll have B-roll going in behind me, so just a quick note, all the decisions you see, that's not me, and it's probably for the better. Now, having played the Ultimate General's games Ultimate General Civil War and Ultimate General uh, Gettysburg, I was immediately familiar with the idea of trench warfare, of reinforcements, of the importance of artillery, etc., etc. However, in a way, it also had no preparation for the micro that is battles in Western Front. First, if you play Total War, the unit card system you're seeing will be immediately familiar. Each unit type has its own profile, complete with its own weapon type, morale, the number of people within its units, along with any effects that might be relevant. If you play Total War, you're already going to have a leg up because things will automatically look familiar to you, so congratulations. Now, troops are automatically divvied up based on infantry and artillery, which does simplify the process of groupings or accidental misclickings, and that's very, very important in this game. Now, you can only have a certain number of units at any given time as well, which does affect the strategies across the board. So, for instance, do I want to deploy more artillery from the get-go to provide more cover, or do I want more infantry to try and push those lines? Now, bringing in reinforcements is an incredibly simple process that reminds me a little bit of Steel Division. You select the unit you want to bring in, you have a small profile, which you can then kind of drag and drop or place on the battlefield. This is really, really good. I love this sort of system because it allows you, the player, to ensure that troops can and will go to their right places right off the bat. There is no microwing necessarily on that part. However, the Western Front is 100% a trench warfare game. Now that sounds obvious, but believe me, once you've lost a dozen units of infantry trying to cross no man's land by yourself, you get the idea really quick that you cannot move troops across a dead space without distracting the opposing side, and that's where the intense micro and your artillery come into play. I cannot recall a game, at least not in recent memory, that puts so much emphasis on artillery and their abilities, so Western Front already has that award in my books. Different RD types have different roles, costing supplies, heavy artillery barrages suppress the firing capabilities of the enemy as they rain down on them, that's from trenches as well as the machine gun turrets, etc, etc, and it's also good for tearing up barbed wire which really, really slows down your infantry. So you can definitely use them to soften the front line, be it through barbed wire, or to really suppress the opposing side so they cannot physically attack you. Light artillery brings in the rolling barrage, which creates a literal wall of bombardment that provides cover for your infantry. If you wanna look back, or perhaps you've seen some of the movies, this was a legitimate strategy that was regularly utilized in World War I, and it was very, very, even micro-intense there. And so to actually see the system in place was just really, really cool to see from what I've read in historical books to then seeing this actually played out in a video game to a relative degree of accuracy. It's the execution, though, that's the really hard part. First, you have to get your infantry ready, which usually means saying, hey, I want you three units to go run towards this line, and that's the last order that I give them. As the troops are running, I then have to use my heavy artillery to suppress the enemy trench lines or the machine gun nests, even the barbed wire ahead of time. And then I switch to my light arty, and I trigger the rolling barrage just right to where my troops are immediately behind each bombardment strike, but I haven't done it so soon that the troops are then caught in the open without support. 
I will say that I pulled off one charge supremely well, and the satisfaction was actually pretty immense. But that one supreme success came with 10 others that were just absolute disasters. It's a great gameplay mechanic. And that's not to mention the scout balloons that we saw, the tanks that you see in the extended gameplay video, bringing in different types of planes to counter enemy defensive lines or even enemy aircraft themselves, or the six to eight other mechanics that we haven't seen yet or I just didn't experience. One thing I'm very much looking forward to is building my own trenches though. The ability to deploy my own strategies to use my supplies how I want rather than have everything laid out and predetermined is a very exciting prospect and I would be very interested to see if those systems remain as the war progresses or if we have to rebuild every single time. It would be a pretty cool and immersive experience to see the remains of previous trench battles where you to come back and fight in that same hex again. Now overall regarding tactical battles, while I was not prepared for the warfare systems in the Western Front like I thought I was going to be. By the time my session was over, I was genuinely having a blast figuring out the minutia, the ins and outs of how the battlefield operates and learning several very hard lessons about keeping troops or not keeping troops out in the open. The gameplay already feels great and it feels fluid. It's just the micro aspect that I think any of us are just gonna have to figure out. Now to wrap up between my time playing a snippet of the game and the extended first look provided by Frontier, this is, I gotta say, 100% a game I would keep my eyes on as a strategy player. There are way too few strategy games set in World War I, and to see all of these unique mechanics come into play, this good before release has me pretty daggum excited about the game, and I will for sure be on the lookout for new information and or sessions that Frontier might want to show off. That's all for today's video on the Great War Western Front by Frontier. I hope that you have enjoyed it. Be sure to support the game by wishlisting it on Steam and support this channel with your comments and by liking the video, subbing to the channel, and turning on bell notifications. This is Havoc, and I'll see you in the next one.